There's no other way to put a bow on this thing than a fresh pop. Let's put a bow on this and get the hell out of here. This is, I'm rookie mocked and fucked out here. <laughs> you speak for yourself. I could keep going three more rounds. <laughs> three I was more, more talking about the fucking, but oh. not, well, not, not any of you guys. Not that there's anything out, wrong with that. But not fucked out. Of course not. not. there's anything wrong with that. All right. So we're going to kind of go through these next uh, position by position here of just kind of what's left and who we like more than other guys and the guys we're kind of taking stabs on. Obviously, Rosen, Darnold, Allen, they're all left right now, and I don't have a problem with you at this point taking really any of those quarterbacks, however you like them. I personally like Rosen, Darnold, Allen. That um, order. But you can kind of go wherever you want with those guys. Maybe I, you could have even argued taking Rosen for Jay Wayne's team with Ben Roethlisberger there on pick uh, 211. Or ahead of uh, Lamar Jackson. Or ahead of Lamar Jackson, if that's how you feel. Um so let's go to the running back group, and we'll just kind of go with the obvious stuff here, the, the handcuff situation. Um, just to read off the guys with handcuffs that kind of left here, um, it would be John Kelly. or So we picked John Kelly. Right. Uh, Mark Walton, Justin Jackson, Ido Smith. Um, you could consider Jordan Wilkins a handcuff, I guess, but he's probably the most volatile to maybe get his own role to start off with here. Yeah, he's got a shot. Um, Chase Edmonds, Bo Scarborough, and I guess you could consider Jalen Samuels a backup for Le'Veon, but I don't quite see it that way, in my nah, opinion. That's James just Conner yet. there. Um, so out of those guys, who's who's your favorite um, kind of handcuff? Obviously, if you have DJ or you right. take Chase Edmonds, if it, you have Freeman, you take Ido Smith. If you have uh, Melvin Gordon, you take Justin Jackson. Um, and those guys move up some for you. But outside of that, if you know you were talking about, hey, you got John Kelly, maybe you just want to take right. John Kelly. Who's your favorite uh, guy next out my of all number, these guys? My number one because of the system, offensive system, is John Kelly because I liked him most as a player before the draft. So I would say my favorite handcuff slash first pick that I'm taking after those guys that I think are going to play have a better shot of playing is John Kelly. Were you yeah. including John Kelly in that? It doesn't matter. We were just, we well, just he just, him, he just so. said who you think is your favorite. And, you know, well, yeah, like, obviously John Kelly for sure. Okay. Well, my number one would be John Kelly just for this point. What about discussion. your number two? Number two. My number two probably just with what's going on on the team and how – his production might at, line up with what he might be able to do is probably Chase Edmonds, but Justin Jackson's right there knocking on the door. The only thing about it is Justin Jackson has a Austin Eckler who is on, you know was a rookie last year himself, but absolutely shined when he got on the field and was highly uh, you know efficient in his touches. So I feel like there's a lot less competition behind the starter. Obviously, the starter is a lot harder to get past. Than, as in, you know, David Johnson is a, you know, nobody's getting past Melvin Gordon. But Melvin Gordon's been nicked up for different things here and there, and always a little gimpy here sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you know, David Johnson broke his wrist. He's coming back. He ain't, he ain't nothing wrong with him. No. You know. So not that there's anything wrong with Melvin Gordon, but he does have, you know, well, he did have the knee, the microfracture surgery years ago, and you never know. He's got skinny legs, and and, and the fact you know. of like the the Chargers will put other guys out on the field to catch balls and do different things from the running back position from time to time. We've seen it with different players that they've had on that team yeah. and putting other guys out there. David Johnson's not coming off the field. This is true. And it, Justin Jackson is a phenomenal pass catcher. He's just a really good balanced running back. Yeah. I think, I think Justin Jackson is probably my favorite out of this group. I can't argue with you. He is too. He's, I like Justin Jackson better than I like Chase Edmonds. I'm just put going on the situation. If one, if David Johnson wants yeah. to get hurt, I think there might be more for Justin and for Chase Edmonds to step into into that role, right? Then if Melvin Gordon were to go down and Justin Jackson split in time with Eckler, yeah. But I like I think Justin Jackson is probably a better pickup than he's Chase a well Edmonds. balanced player. He, I, he could run it if if you have to. He's he had like a thousand yards every year. Yep. He was in college. He caught a ton of balls. He's got a bunch of receiving chops. He can pass block. He can do a little bit of everything. I thought it was a great pick for the Chargers. Who oh always, yeah, they've had such bad luck with injuries over sure. the last five years that it was a great pick to not to have Eckler. And throw Jackson back there well, with him. So the if thing something is, happens is, is, to Melvin Gordon, they'll be okay. I just felt like the Chargers didn't really like Eckler that much for whatever. It just didn't seem like they wanted to give him his due there. So then they went and picked up Justin Jackson, which might not mean anything at all, but yeah, might it kind of tells me that maybe maybe they were interested in they didn't like what they were seeing out of him for whatever reason. Eckler had some strong spots in the season when he got chances. If you don't know what's going on behind the scenes in practice or how he takes care of himself in the lunchroom, they might not like him at all. Yeah. But when he touches the ball, Eckler was phenomenal. Yeah. So who 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 do you got, Jay Wayne? 
I kind of like all these guys. I mean, Mark Walton, he's a, he's a quick twitcher. I, I like kind of his athletic specimen and how he looks running the ball, but I, I think he's a little raw. I don't know that he would even get the bulk of carries if, if something were to happen to Joe Mixon. I don't necessarily like that offensive line. They did try to make some improvements, but, I mean, I can't argue with you if you like Mark Walton and want to take him. I can't argue with you with Justin Jackson. I really like what Edo Smith has going on. Kari Coleman or uh, Tevin Coleman's probably going to be out of there next year. He could carve out a role with or without Devontae Freeman. Mm -hmm. Um, I maybe Bo Scarborough is the most valuable one there, just because Zeke has more than one way to to get out of the game and suspended and all that. But I would say, and I uh, like his skill set. I mean, he's. I think Bruiser Bo Scarborough and, probably gets overlooked the most out of the skill set that he had. There was a point yeah. in time where nobody could do anything to stop Bo Scarborough. Yeah, yeah. And, a, and, and, a ta- and, a, and two years ago when he broke his leg in a championship game, but there's not Clemson other, couldn't stop him. Exactly, exactly. Other than Alabama, the next talented, the most talented defense was Clemson, and Bo Scarborough was knocking him over like bowling yeah. pins. Yeah, now, Bo Scarborough looks awesome. He's I like tackle I like taking machine. a shot on Bo Scarborough mostly if I have Ezekiel Elliott. There is Rod Smith there. He's kind of the incumbent. He played well in his situation last year. He's still there. He's a pat, little bit of a pat, more of a, probably a pass catcher, even though Bo Scarborough was second in the team right. in receptions with right. like 14 catches. 17. One thing Something I'd like to say yeah. about these guys, because they get they can get lost in the wash if you got a short bench or you only got, like say you got a four-round rookie draft and you got, you know, we got this home league we just did was 12-man Pretty deep benches, but it's only four rounds in the draft, and you're not going to be able to stack these guys up. But if you're one of those guys where you got like three or four third and fourth round picks because mm-hmm. of different trades, if you got a bunch of picks and you got a decent taxi squad, take as many of these backups as you can because it only takes one injury yeah. for one of them to be a bright, shining right. star for four to six or eight weeks. Maybe maybe Zeke gets suspended or hurt, and Bo Scarborough is awesome. Maybe Justin Jackson comes in here if Melvin Gordon goes down and is tearing it up. You know, yeah. maybe I I think Mark Walton is is a is a fine dice roll, but I think Geo is so solidified as a solid NFL running back. He's probably not my he's not going to be up there on the list for me in this category, but he's a good player and he could be. And so if I got a couple of third round or you know fourth round picks, if I got if I'm one of those teams where I just have three or four fourth round picks and I got the roster space or the taxi squad. Log as many of these goes guys on your team as you can, and the first running back injury that pops up, they probably got the the good guy to have might be on your bench. Yeah, and I mean, the guy with the most opportunity right out of the rip will probably be Jordan Wilkins, which I can't argue with you if you want to take him at the end of the second round, just because that it is kind of wide open over there. I don't really necessarily love him per se. I like Marlon Mack and Naheen Hines, and they still got the gun show Robert Turbin, right. um, but. He's got an opportunity could to take, establish. There's, he's got an opportunity to grab a hold of that thing where no, most of those other guys we're talking about liter- do not. Literally, he's got the most wide open chance. He's got the most free space in front of him of any of those guys we just talked about. He's got the least productive running back in front of him of, out of all those guys. So the the quickest first step on the field is Jordan Wilkins if he earns it. Now, he might not earn it, and he'd just be back there in the mud with the other guys, but if he earns it, it's there to be taken. Sure. There's none of those other guys we just talked about could go earn a dry job anytime soon um, without well, injury, out, obviously. Right. Before we move on from the running backs, uh, Jalen Samuels is a guy I'm very intrigued with. He, you don't really know. if When you watch him, he looks like a, a running back, but then he also plays wide receiver, and I think he got Tight drafted end, as a fullback. And and like, fullback, and so it's just, just like a very interesting offensive chess weapon piece, there. And they get... I mean, there's a new offensive coordinator in the Steelers, so I, I don't know exactly what's going to go down, but they're fairly creative, and there's he's a fun lot to of watch, offense man. to have, and yeah. he's very fun to watch. He'll he's break big. a game open. He's big Tough and to physical. Wrangle, fast. Yeah, so very intrigued by him. I, I mean, we went pretty hard in the paint for Josh Adams post yeah. or pre-NFL draft. Um, I like, you know, we were talking about off-air, the Eagles and their situation. They could be down a couple running backs as soon as next year, and he could be – in a position to assume some carries. Sure. He's an undrafted free agent, so not as much draft not capital. As, not a ton of capital, but I did like his game a lot. So at the end of every draft, if that guy's around, I'm typically putting For him sure. on my squad. Yeah, in the fourth round, you can't go wrong with him. And I also really like Akram Wadley. You know, maybe he's Deion Lewis's handcuff in that offense. Well, I'm glad you brought up Jalen Samuels because I was going to say something before we got away from the running backs about him real quick. I can't remember what podcast it was, but about two or three weeks ago, I heard somebody saying that Jalen Samuel, in the, he's Probably he could be he could might be uh, put in there and and I think he's in, in my fantasy league as a tight end 
right now. And he potentially could be the running back, by, you know, if James Conner doesn't get it and or Jalen Samuels. Put a running back in your that's, tight end spot. That's what he was – I forget, man, I wish I could call out which podcast I heard that on. But, like, that would be ridiculous. That would be like cheating if Jalen Sam if, – if Le'Veon Bell was to get hurt and say, they decided to use that chess piece Jalen Samuels as the, as the running back and give him some targets and give him some handoffs – and he, Shit! And, even if he doesn't get hurt, and he decides to play some tight end in game to game, yeah, like, yeah, right. yeah. Or yeah, if he earns, it, if he's if he's good enough to be in your tight end spot as a tight end <laughs> for the Steelers, it's there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, but the potential cheating. I mean, that's like a free space. If Jalen Samuels, sure. is, if if Le'Veon gets hurt Absolutely. and he's the backup and he's considered a tight end for a year on in, on your format on your platform that you're playing on, I mean, you gotta you gotta take that and run with it. So. Take a shot on Jalen Samuels at the end of the draft if you got a spot on your bench. All right, so that's a couple of our favorites at the running back position. We all kind of had a different of opinion there. We touched on a, a couple, a bunch of guys at the end of this list. Um, but let's move on to the next category.